Hello everybody and welcome. Today is the first video of my series guiding you through HP UX. HP UX is, as you can see, Hewlett Packard's Unix. It was used as a workstation system up to the mid 2000s. Now it survives in the Itanium line and I'm sure after Itanium is gone, HP is going to probably get rid of it. It's a very interesting operating system. Of course, you get some of the standard Unix utilities, uh, some proprietary applications that are interesting. And I'm going to guide you through some of the features and let's see how it looks like. Of course, this is not a production system, so my root account has no password here. I didn't manage to do a digital capture, even though my sound card has a um, uh, DVI output, so we are stuck with VGA now, but should work okay. When you log in, you get your standard CDE affair, so there's no desktop per se, meaning that there are no icons here. What you get is a small dock that you can move around, minimize, see, you can change place, change size, but I like it in the middle just as it is the standard. You get a clock that does nothing if you double click, a calendar that opens your standard calendar. This is the, the standard CD calendar, right? You can write appointments and assume that all your other colleagues are in the same network, you could compare calendar with someone else. You see here, Right, you could check your mail, you could send an email for here, and this is all the standard Unix send mail functionality. Yeah? So, of course, this is from an era before the internet was a dangerous place, and also all workstations had their own IP addresses. Right, you can print, there are a few options here. There is even a privacy toggle like you see in Outlook these days. Very bare bones, not much to write home about. It does a job, right? If you have everyone in a local network, you can share calendars this way. Maybe if we expose it to the internet, you could get something done. Let us see. Last revision, 1997. And at the time, of course, there was a Unix consortium here. So HP, IBM, Novel, and Sun worked together to make sure that CDE uh, applications were portable and intercompatible. Yeah. This is a novel file manager that comes with, uh, with CDE. So, you browse the same way as you would with any folder-based file manager, but it's very hard to, you cannot drag and drop things like this. It doesn't work properly. Yeah, you see, it doesn't have the sensitivity, sensibility to know that uh, you just drag the icon around. It's very primitive, but you can open the terminal from the folder where you are, right? And this is quite advanced. Uh, I don't see this often these days. You can move things around, create uh, links, open a folder in a new window automatically, right? Um, there are some view options here. You can align icons to the grid. You can show a directory tree, for example, right? But I hate it. I don't like to use it. Uh, it's what we have, though. I could install something else, but I never bothered. You get some dockable applications here. The standard CD text editor. It's very bare bones and have almost no functionality. But you can wrap lines. You can see the status line showing the number of lines and totals. It doesn't show the columns, I think. Yeah, no columns, so basically also very useless. All right. In the settings, you can justify, which is cool, something that WordPad doesn't do, Notepad doesn't do. 
you can adjust some margin. So there are some options. I think if I would install my full script here, I could get something done out of it. But this is integrated with the Unix spell checker, which is cool. So it just pipes the text into another application, right? So it's not built in. And this is the Unix way of doing things, yeah. Of course, there is a help option here. So CD had a very complete documentation. Assuming, of course, that you would be a person who would have such workstation, don't know uh, how to use a computer, yeah, which is, well, highly unlikely. Yeah. So you get a list of tasks. So this basically how developers assume they would use the application. Yeah? So instead of browsing through the help topics, you can just come here and ta -da, get the structure that you need. If you open here, then you get by default the icon editor. And I never knew why this was such a fashionable option here, yeah? but here you can create your own icons and map them to applications, right? They are bit mapped icons, not vectorial like the SGIs. You see the other the text editor after to save or not, and this one only warns you that the doc, the changes will be lost. And this is the kind of thing that Apple does very well. Yeah? The teams talk to each other, so they follow these guidelines. And here, for example, a user could click OK, thinking it's going to be saved and lose the document. Mm, the terminal, right? I don't even know what, uh, what shell this is, but uh, I have actually installed a very old version and you can use it. Standard Unix mail here, as you can see you get system messages are sent to this box. And if you would have more workstations in the same network or with the mail service running, you could send and receive email to your colleagues out of the box, yeah? There's some information here from HP. Basically, system error messages also get sent to your mailbox, yeah? I tried at some point to connect this to my mail server internally. And I might try this again, you know, since I host my own email, I can quickly, how to say, try to configure it in an insecure way, but only for the IP address of the workstation and try to send messages. I'm not sure it's gonna work out. Let's see if there's an option. Yeah, I'm not sure I can even use a mail server here. Here you can change between workspace, and this is very common in Linux. It's available here as well. You can adjust the volume. It's not running yet, but you could. You can lock the screen. Here you can exit your session, log out. It's going to save the state, yeah, just like recent versions of Mac OS do, yeah. Once you log out, when you log back in, it's going to reload all, our, all your applications. Not always they will save the state, meaning that you may not get the document that you had open, right? But it will relaunch the applications. Here yeah, you can print. And I may go around and look for a um, Postscript driver here so I can, you know, add my printer. Let's look into SAM and see what I can do. Here's a style manager. So it's basically a control panel only for CD. Yes, yeah? so you can choose your color themes, right? The changes apply instantly. You could even wow, allocate the color palette. That's quite funny. 
can change the default fonts here, change your wallpaper that's called the backdrop in CD language, or just keyboard settings. Basically, if you get a click and if it auto repeats, configure your mouse. So I have a USB workstation mouse here. So the standard Unix three button mouse, the defaults are fine for me. So I leave it like it is. You can adjust the screensaver, uh, the game of life, fractals, more fractals, bees, rotor, fireworks, with you worms. You can adjust the window behavior here. So instead of having to click to make a window active, you can you, you only have to point. Right. You can put the active window on the top or not, and that's a very novel behavior that I haven't seen anywhere else. And you have some startup options here, yeah? so you can switch off logout confirmation. You can make it not resume your session, right? Next. I'm going to show the application later, so let's go to help. In general, you get a standard CD help on how to use desktop, and that's what you get uh, in AIX. But with HPUX, you get a quite complete help file. So if you are migrating from an older version that doesn't use CD, there's a migration tool, right? You have a debugger help, help for soft banging. Soft banging is such an excellent uh, development environment. You can access the help from here. CDs help, right? How to deal with fonts, which is quite interesting. You can customize the system here. And if you have a workstation like this, you set it once, you run it for five years, right? So. Linux, Unix in general, they are all very customizable. You have help related to HP UX 11. So you get here a list of tasks, for example, right? How to manipulate files. You can change your shell, right? So for example, we can try to use this command here. That would be work. Right. And another cool thing about uh, having the two button mouse in a Unix environment, if I take this text here and I don't have to copy and paste, and I'm going to click the middle mouse button in the terminal and it will paste the text for me. But as you can see, it doesn't make it the active window. I click and I can run a command. So you avoid doing accidents. It's very, very cool. You get different shells built in. And yeah, I'm not going to go through the help uh, topics, but you can see it's very complete. You have a shredder, so you have a trash can here. Very simple, as you can see. Now let's go through the pre-installed applications. Or not all of them are pre-installed. I installed the multimedia and development packages, but you get here, audio clients, right? You get an audio control and that's basically a basic volume control. I get this error here that I cannot access the audio hardware because the service is not set to startup. So if I do help, check audio server, and I just run the audio server daemon, you come here, open the terminal, Now the audio server is running. And if I relaunch audio control, it's going to work. It supports multiple outputs, right? So here I can choose what output I'm controlling it. I could, for example, enable speaker. It has internal speaker, headphone, and line out. And I control the volume of all of them together. I can mute, should mute. And if I click on monitoring, it's going to look back what it's playing 
you know, back to the headphones, yeah. The help is quite complex. There is a lot of information about supported audios, uh, audio formats, right? Information on data rate. It's the kind of documentation that we don't have anymore and people don't care about understanding these things well, yeah? So the other day I was troubleshooting some problem at work and I couldn't find the registry key to change a setting. The developer didn't have the information. I had to spend 30 minutes digging into Windows registry to figure it out. Just awful. The audio editor is another interesting program. And I have no idea why would you use this? Maybe you are taking notes, so I don't know. It reminds me of the Windows 95 sound recorder, just very simple. Yeah, so I'm gonna pick up microphone here, but I can use also sounds going to X as input. I don't have the CD audio connected, but if I would, I could choose the CD. Yeah. So microphone here, I can choose the data rate. So 4400 classic. Auto game control puts the volume up and down as you speak uh, quieter or louder. Then if I tap record, I have a microphone connected and I should ideally get some signal or Okay, the microphone was not connected. Now you can see I have some signal. The input is very quiet and I know that uh, I tried some recordings and the sound card is just too noisy. It's not well grounded yet. So let me play this back for you. Aha! You can do some basic editing. That's quite advanced. Let me see if I can unmute this. All right. Now that we established that this is a newsletter application, we can go back to desktop apps. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but this is your usual it's cd yeah it's always the same so calculator we already we've seen calendar yes create action you can basically create some sort of macro like a script and you have an icon that calls a bash script or an application right uh it can be a graphical window or terminal closing or not or even no output so basically like more advanced kind of window shortcut that used to have in the past. Um, yeah, never use this. The file manager we've seen, the help view we've seen, the icon editor as well. Main page viewer is just, let's see, you can open a main page. Yeah? So instead of going to the terminal, so if you are doing something else and you want to keep this as a reference, you can move this to the side, but I have no idea why you'd use this instead of uh, just moving a terminal window around. Yeah, all the all the rest here we've seen. Going up, desktop tools. Now here, again CD. Yeah, if you do archive, it's gonna do tar. Uh, so this is also a shortcut for tar command. You see, it's an action. Yeah, so. Can I edit this? Um, yeah, I probably can open this with the action editor. Anyway, so Antar check spell is gonna just trigger the classic Unix file checker. So you can basically spell check any file. So let me see here if I do some readme file. Let's try to spell check this file here. So if I paste this here, 
So it doesn't know LP and proactive and you see it's just standard output. It took the standard input and ran it through the spell checker, it's just a pipe. Clipboard contents, you can see the clipboard contents, so there you go. I think it, it may support graphic content, I'm not sure. You can save the clipboard content. Compare file is a diff, Chromepad file is a tar z, count words is basically wc, so we can do the same thing. There you go. Digital clock is this beauty here. Disk usage just the, will do df-h. As you can see here, it shows you how much space you have available in each partition. I have no idea what this is supposed to do. Okay, not touching it. Edit bitmap. It doesn't even recognize the side of the bitmap on its own. You have to enter it manually. Ugh. I don't know what this does. This will list your environment variables, so very classic as well. It's basically you are a non Unix geek, but you need to use the workstation, like you're an engineer, for example, and you're use running, I don't know, Katia, for example then you get access to everything you need, yeah. Execute command, folder size, again, I think that's gonna be du-h, let's see. Oh, in blocks, oh. font list, list the font installed in your system. Uh, font preview, let's see how it works, open font list again, let's try to select this, go to font preview, paste it, and yeah, again, Unix, text in, text out, it prints the fonts, pretty cool actually, it's a very good font uh, previewer, straight to the point, technical data is here in case you are a programmer, excellent. HP term is terminal. Again, the connect to remote terminal, but you don't have to enter the command, you just type it here. Make, refresh display. I don't want to break my recording, so I'm not going to touch it. Uh, symbols list. Hmm. System load does that. There is no load at all, this is super light. You can open VI. Hmm. Type file. Tap an action on compass file, watch errors. Mm -hmm. Window information. So you click a window, it's gonna give you the size and so on. All right? This is classic X stuff. Window properties. Oh, this is no idea. X server information. So we have here vendor of the solution, resolution, available extensions. Can I continue? Yes, I can. See? So it supports all these things. One screen 1920 by 1080. And so on. Can capture, take a screenshot, right? And you can look at the screenshot here, classic XWD. Let's leave this mess and go back to our applications. In information, hey, if you go to the soft into direction, that's the classic CDE help. So if you are used to DOS or Windows and you need to run CDE and you're really bad at computers, then you have this, again, I cannot imagine you using a Unix workstation and needing to know what the button one does, but the information is here and this is what matters. Softbench, I've published a full video about Softbench and I just love it. 
So yeah. I'm really, this is, I'm learning a lot about, uh, I'm improving my programming skills using SoftBench and it's just perfect. Check my other video and enjoy. System admin, we're gonna go through this. This is Sam, we're gonna open it up and see what we have. Video output, this I don't have a compatible um, video card, but I could basically select a video, an area of the screen, right? And then output it. Yeah, I don't have a compositive port, but I could send part of the screen to a TV. So let's suppose you build your new 3D render, you just take it, make the screen this, the window this size, move it over. It means that this output here is going to your uh, project area. Yeah. Yeah, to a TV or a VCR, this is outdated. Let's get rid of this. Um, view to CDE, so this is, I don't know what this is supposed to do. Do I want to migrate my view tray customizations to CDE? Not at all. Now this video is getting quite long, so I'm gonna wrap up by showing you SAM, and that's not gonna be very quick. But SAM is where you do HP UX configuration. Yeah, so you type SAM. Or rather, I'm gonna split this video and uh, it's gonna be easier for people watching. 30 minutes is long enough. Thanks for watching, and I will see you right now.